Exodus, the second book of the Bible, an interesting selection for a self-proclaimed non-believer to focus a book on. This freedom is a funny thing, he told them. It ain't something permanent like rocks and hills. It's like manna. You just gotta keep on gathering it fresh every day. If you don't, one day you're gonna find you ain't got none no more. Part of my endeavor is to continue to drive into Zora Neale Hurston's writings. She's an author that has inspired me to want to live a better life and to rethink about perspective. If there's one thing that Zora has mastered, it's her ability to really see into the soul and shoes and heart of so many different types of people. And I don't have that ability, and I want to. And that's why I continue to read her writings, is that she's able to bring out something that I believe is inherently good, which is empathy and understanding for other individuals. Moses, Man of the Mountain. Zora Neale Hurston's third book and arguably her most ambitious book. If you're familiar with Zora Neale Hurston, you'll know that she spent time as an anthropologist researching people's beliefs, their lores, a time in the Caribbean in 1936, kind of researching all the different ways that people might look at things, including how different cultures look at Moses. Because one of the things that you'll learn is Moses was a lot of different things to different people. He was worshiped almost at the level of deity to the point of being the greatest conjurer to have ever existed based on the culture and the stories and the lore that they had behind him. And one thing that was a common thread, Valerie Boyd will write about, the people who told these stories typically would retell them where Moses was in their image. So here comes Zora Neale Hurston to take these stories and create them, mix them, and even retell Moses from the Afro-American narrative perspective. So what you're getting with this book is one of the strongest narrations possible in terms of retellings. It's humorous, it's engaging, and it's easy to read. This is much more approachable if you were put off from their eyes were watching God, her second, and many claim her masterpiece. This is much easier to consume and paced at a speed that allows a reader to reflect on this meaning and the meanings to different people and how it may differ from your own. The book deals with freedom and what it means to an individual as well as religion, obviously. But that's where Zora Neale Hurston is fascinating. Even if she is a non-believer in and of herself, she knows how important origin stories are to people, how important religion is to cultures. She saw that these were foundational for how people viewed themselves and told their stories. And she really wanted to understand and cross boundaries between people as it became her lifelong work and probably the central focus of a lot of her narratives. Because the book of Exodus is a story of slavery. It is about the Israelites, the Hebrews, who were under Egyptian rule and were forced to build a kingdom for peoples who were not their own. It's not a far leap to compare this to the European slavery trades and the institutionalized slavery that occurred in America at the time. The more you know about Zora Neale Hurston, the more you know that she had a very passionate and powerful way of thinking about the Renaissance era and what was the post-slavery African-American race going to be? What was their role? They were facing tons of oppression and racism. And what did that mean? When you look at these stories from the Bible from years ago and contextualize it with a story that's happening in her present time when she was writing this. And I think a lot of this comes down to the idea of freedom. What does freedom mean to a person? Can you actually give freedom to someone or is it something that starts internal with an individual? He had found out that no man may make another free. Freedom was something internal. The outside signs were just signs and symbols of the man inside. All you could do was give the opportunity for freedom and the man himself must make his own emancipation. Zora takes this and looks at it across time and looks at what does it mean to lead versus what does it mean to rule. When we look at the story of Exodus, it's not just about how the Israelites were able to escape into the desert and head towards their promised land. There was significant time spent about dealing with the Pharaoh at the time and giving him the choice, the opportunity to free them. Many think this has to deal with free will. Many think this has to do with the hardening of the heart. It's a complex tale, but another way to look at it is that you are freeing two peoples, 
One from the curse and the evil thought of slavery and others from the act of being enslaved. So when you look at this from the Harlem Renaissance in America with the Jim Crow laws and how white Americans were oppressing African-American individuals in the country, you might have freed the African-Americans by law, but not by treatment, not by equalization. They were still facing a lot of hardships where you could view it as we didn't succeed in freeing the minds of many white Americans at the time is one way to contextualize these struggles across time, across culture. So maybe in the same way that the Hebrews were searching for their promised land, their place of safety and happiness, maybe too, what does what does the promised land look like for others? Even now for you as a reader, regardless of your background, what is that idea of freedom, of the ability to live your own life and to have happiness come from within and where do you find that? Where does that come from in one's life? So reading this as just a parable is perhaps the smallest way one can look at this. It's a much broader conversation of how does one move forward and what does happiness and freedom mean to that movement forward for you? And the last thing I would say is don't be intimidated by not knowing everything. Even if you're not super comfortable or familiar with the book of Exodus, Zora Neale Hurston gives you everything you're going to need to completely understand where you are in the story and give you the elements that you need to make sure that you have a, a firm grasp on the situation. And yes, Zora does usually tackle more deeply the themes of the divide between men and women, and it is here in this book, but perhaps that is not the forefront that it is in a lot of her other writings. Zora spends much more time kind of examining this, this myth of Moses, of leadership versus rule. And where do we put the importance and the priority of that in our lives? I'm going to leave a playlist down below of Zora Neale Hurston talks that we've had on this channel before because she is one of my favorite writers of all time. Hopefully that's something that you guys are passionate and interested about as well. Have you guys already read this or are you thinking about reading this? Let me know in the comments down below. Feel free to drop by our Discord and let me know if you've loved this book because it sure was one of my favorite reads of this year. Peace out.